We're joined now with Paul Doswell. Paul, looking forward to this Wednesday's National League South game against Dulwich. Can you give us your thoughts? Excited for the game. Um, probably as much for the opposition. I think that you know they're a, a club that we could aspire to actually in some ways. You know their, their crowds have now got to three and a half thousand. Uh, that's enabled their management team to, to bring in some top players this summer. Uh, you know, good, real, real good, real good lads as well, Gavin Junior. So looking forward to, to the game. I think that, that Dulwich provide a massive threat, especially in the forward areas of the pace they've got. Um, and yeah, I mean, Wednesday night here under the lights are always, always good games. So just looking forward to it. We had an interesting fixture against them last season here at the Draper Tools, winning 3-1. Are we looking to kick on with that sort of success? Or is it a case of they're a new side, new set-up and, and, and moving yeah, forward? I remember, I remember I think the game before though was in the FA Cup and they beat us, they beat us here as well. So, you know, I, I don't really look at last year's form, to be honest, as, as, as a guide. Because if you look at who they bought in this year, you know, Darren McQueen, they signed from Dagenham. Um, you know, the, the lad McGregor in midfield was decent. They signed Holland, who's you know probably his captain from last year. So they've strengthened really, really well. Uh, see Andre Blackman, the left back's gone there. Um, Jazzy Barn and Bob from Darford, the right wing back. So you know you go through their whole side now, and of course you've got Danny Mills, who's you know been around the conference south scene for years, and we've got a huge amount of respect for. So uh, I think it's going to be a, a real cracking game of football tomorrow against two sides that are going to try and go for it. And from a supporter's point of view, they look at the league table before they come to a game like this and they see 7th v 2nd, only game in the league on the night. It really is an enticing fixture to come and watch, isn't it? Yeah, and it, you know, the, the interesting thing about this league at the moment is that everyone's bunched together to about 12 teams and it's like a snakes and ladders league at the minute. If you win one game, you know, you can be 2nd. If you lose a game, you can be 10th or 11th. Uh, as I've always said, the key, the key thing is to be in and around that pack, whether you're 1st or whether you're 10th. I think there's only six points the difference now so being that pack around January February and then you have a real good March April March April is what wins you the league it's so important to stay in that pack uh, you know for the next two or three months Good touch on players for our own squad we've obviously had a very long injury list in, in previous times do we have an update on how the guys are progressing? Yeah it's, um, it's progressing uh, slowly as, as we know the long injuries are the, the good news for us is we've, we've literally got three more league games to get through you know, with the current squad of 14 players. Um, I've got to give a lot of credit to those 14, 15 players. Actually, at times it's been 13 and 14. Because, you know, we've we've been on a great run in the league, especially in kept clean sheets on the back of having a very tight-knit squad because of the lack of players. But come come Boxing Day at Dorking, you know, we know that Alex Wall will be back. We know Scotty Rendell will be back. We also know that Ross Warner will be back. And probably for the Bath game, Jamie Collins will be back. So there is... There is some good news coming. <clears throat> We've just got to probably get through the next two or three games um, before any of those return properly. Finally, like I said, mention supporters. It'd be remiss of me to to touch back on last weekend's game and the the hardy souls that went to Slough in the the Baltic conditions. Really has seen an upturn in the in the vocal support for our players recently. It's, it's like a tribe mentality where we're down to so few numbers. The crowd are becoming that extra player. How's, how's that really progressing in amongst the morale of the group? Well, I think I can only go back to the last home game against Maidstone when we had, I think, nearly 1,500, 1,600 here. And uh, every time we went forward, you could hear the crowd, especially the younger voices, really rising and getting behind the team. Away from home this year has been outstanding. I think, you know, Les getting back on the supporters, you know, reforming the supporters club, getting the coaches going again and the minibuses going. You know, it's, it was brilliant actually, Braintree, you know, we had a full coach and we had a, a separate minibus come in, so, you know, to see that amount of Braintree, which can be a very quiet sort of place, um, you know, every time we went forward, every time we scored, the noise was just from the Haven, Haven contingent, so they know how important they are to us, um, you know, but it's the, home, it's the home crowd that's noisy as well, which really helps us, it's uh, Wednesday nights have, have always been great nights here, uh, always good games, and I just hope that that uh, obviously continues tomorrow. I'm sure you'll join me in hoping that a lot of people will come down to the Draper Tours tomorrow night. Paul, thank you for your time and the best of luck in the next couple of games. Cheers, Gary.